to our students. Today, uh, in the previous lecture, we uh, classified, uh, we talked about verb phrase, we classified verbs according to functions of items. We said that verbs are classified according to functions of items, according to complementation, according to possibility of admitting progressive aspect, and according to structure of the verb. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, classify verbs according to functions of the item, in which they are classified into lexical verbs and auxiliary verbs. In the lexical verbs, we said that we have two kinds of verbs, regular verbs and irregular verbs. We said that regular verbs are regularly changed into past and past participle, while regular verbs are, they are irregular. There is no rule, there is no rule when we change them into past and into past uh, past participle. We talked about auxiliary verbs, the classification of auxiliary verbs. We said that there are primary verbs and there are modal verbs, there are marginal modal verbs and there are modal auxiliaries. Marginal modal auxiliaries. So we said that primary verbs, why they are why they are called primary verbs? Because they are sometimes functioning as the primary verb. They are sometimes functioning as an auxiliary verb. That's why they are called primary verbs. So they are sometimes become full verb as we have, I am a student or I am reading. In the case of the first one, am is a, is a main verb, is a full verb, while in the second one is an auxiliary. The second typology, we talked about basic modal verbs. We said that these are some of the basic modal verbs in which the use of these modal verbs are extremely important to know. And the use of some modal verbs are extremely dangerous. So that's why we have to be very careful uh, of using these modal verbs. And some people or some students uh, misunderstandingly uh, uh, refer to the past form can, to could, may, to might, shall, to should, or to wit. In fact, only in one case could the could is the past of can in the case of ability. Otherwise, could and can can, all can be used for past, for present, and for future. We also talked about marginal modal auxiliaries, or sometimes they are called semi-modal auxiliaries, or semi-modal auxiliaries, or sometimes they are called quasi-modal auxiliaries. So, including to be capable of, be able to, uh, be able to have the capacity of dare to, need to, used to. We also talked about verbs in terms of complementation, intensive verbs, and extensive verbs. I will just pause a little bit on these two types of verbs today uh, and explain and explain to you what's the difference between the intensive verbs and extensive verbs. Remember, this is the second classification of verbs in which verbs are classified according to complementation. It, may, it means what, what comes after the verb. So, as I said in the previous lectures, if you master verb phrase and noun phrase, you master nearly 90% of syntax. Intensive verbs, there are two kinds of intensive verbs. There are current copula verbs and resulting copula verbs. Remember last year I told you what is copula verb. Copula verb is extremely important to know. Copula verbs uh, classify into Mm, uh, verb to be and linking verbs. So intensive copula verbs or intensive verbs are classified into two types of copula verbs. The first one is called current copula verb and the second one is called resulting copula verb. Why they are called current copula verb? Because they talk about something that is happening now. Especially verb to be is, example, I am Jamal. I am a student talking about right now. You appear sad. It means right now you appear sad. That's why it's called current copula. So currently means now. I feel happy means I am happy. 
You look tired means now you look tired. I remain silent means right now I remain silent. You seem happy. It means you are happy right now. So they are talking about current situation. That's why they are called current copula. While the second types of intensive verbs are called resulting copula. Resulting copula, there is a result of there is something that change into into something else. So there are two states. One of them, the previous state, and the second one is the next state. So resulting copula remember refer to these kinds of verbs, to these kinds of copula verbs that they talk about what result, cause and effect. For example, I become happy. A result as a result of something, I become happy. I get mad. As a result of something, I get mad. That's why it's called resulting copula. I go uh, crazy. As a result of something, I go crazy. It grows. Uh, it grows hard. So as a result of something, it grows. Hard. It turns bad as a result of something. So all of them are resulting into something else. That's why they are called resulting copula. The case of extensive verbs are these kinds of verbs that you have to know them in detail. The first one is what? Intransitive verbs. And the second one is transitive verbs. Intransitive verbs are these verbs that they do not need any object to complete its meaning, which means if, I, if, I, if I'm saying he's singing, the baby cried, their meanings will be full. You can add something after these verbs, but their meanings will suffice. Their meanings are enough. So uh, uh, with the subject and the verb, the meaning is full. That's why it does not need any other uh, elements. You can add other elements. You can add as much elements as you can, but they don't need any object. That's why object means what? In, in the previous lecture, we said that noun or pronoun. We classified nouns as common nouns and proper nouns. We classified pronouns as indefinite pronouns and definite pronouns. So in, it is, in transfer verbs, they do not need any object. In Kurdish, we call them firmani kenapar. And in Arabic, they are called afa'alil lazima. It means they do not need any object. Transitive verbs are these verbs that they require an object or they need an object. So, uh, there are three types of verbs that, in the previous lecture, uh, I told you that just Google monotransitive verbs, just Google ditransitive verbs, just Google complex transitive verbs, it will give you a list of all of these verbs. Just let me try it for you here. For example, just go to Google, just write down mono transitive verbs. So you will get a list of mono transitive verbs. So in this way, you can have a list of mono transitive verbs. Uh, a list of monotransitive verbs. So just go to the monotransitive verbs or ditransitive verbs or just write down monotransitive verbs, a list. So it will give you a list of monotransitive verbs. So just click on these links, it will give you a monotransitive verb. Or just uh, write down ditransitive verbs or ditransitive verb list. Example list, it will give you a list of ditransitive verbs. So a list of ditransitive verbs. For example, these are some of the ditransitive verbs. It means they need two objects, indirect object and direct object. Indirect object and direct. So this, this is the list of mono. Uh, this is the list of ditransitive verbs. So in the same way, you can go just Google the ditransitive verbs, just Google complex transitive verbs, so on, so forth. 
I will try to post this on your page after the lecture finished. So, monotransitive verbs, mono is a Greek prefix means one, and di is a Greek prefix means two, complex transitive is the meaning of it is self-explanatory, which is complex. Monotransitive verbs, they need only one object, which is called direct object. So the pattern is S, V, O. For example, I caught the ball. I kissed her. So only one object after it, which is her. One object after it, which is the ball. So notice her is, is a pronoun, which functions as an object, and the ball is a common noun which functions as the object. Dichanster verbs are these verbs that they need two objects. For example, send, give, and. I gave him a book. There are two, two objects here. Because gave needs two objects. Him is an indirect object. A book is a direct object. Again, pronouns are indirect objects and nouns are direct objects. Or if we if we don't have, if we do not have any pronouns, so uh, I give Ali a book. So the first noun is an indirect object. The second noun is direct object. Complex transitive verbs usually. Uh, require an object and a complement of the object or require an object and adverbial of the object so the pattern is SVOCO or SVOA just like in this case he made me what he made me what so this needs a complement of the object he made me really crazy really crazy refers to me rather than refer to he he sent his son to the kindergarten. So to the kindergarten, completing the meaning of his son. So it refers to his son. So it's an adverbial form. So really crazy is an object complement, while to the kindergarten is adverbial. Why? Because to is a preposition. The kindergarten is a noun phrase. So preposition plus a noun phrase becomes a prepositional phrase. So prepositional phrases function as adverbial so this is called complex transfer verb. so the other classification of verbs is a state of verb the possibility of admitting progressive aspect whether a verb can be changed into uh, change into uh, progressive or change into continuous verb or not so we have two kinds of verbs state of verbs and dynamic verbs. State of verbs are these verbs that they do not need any, they, they, they can, we cannot add ing to them. Dynamic verbs, you, you, we usually use ing with them. Why? Because they refer to motion verbs. There is movement. But state of verbs, there is no movement. For example, the, per, the verbs of inert perception, recognition, like auxiliary, like uh, verb to be, like uh, sensation verb talking about senses like emotion verbs like uh, uh, perception verbs understand realize like uh, possession verbs like possess own have and the second type is so the, the innate perception like adore astonish believe hate hear impress know like I like you. You cannot say I'm liking you. So you say I like you. That's why this verb, when you say I like you, means now I like you. In the future I like you. So it's continuous by default. That's why it does not need, it does not need ing to make it continuous. He said he hated cooking. You cannot say I'm hating cooking. Why? Because hate is continuous by form. So relational verbs, relational verbs are, are, are also these kinds of verbs that cannot be used in the continuous aspect. That's why they are called state of verbs. Apply to, equal, deserve, involve, lack, matter, meet, owe, resemble, possess, sound, tend. 
So she resembles her mother. You cannot say she is resembling her mother because she resembles her mother is already continuous. The dynamic verbs are these verbs that refer to the motion verbs in, in which these verbs, by default, they talk about action. They are called action verbs. They are dynamic. They can be changed. We can add ing to them. In which these verbs show the action or change of stage. For example, she names English. He hit me. She, she is English. She isn't English. Dynamic verb because it denotes to the permanent status. For example, the first one, the first type of dynamic verb is verb of body sensation. Body sensation like ache, like hurt, like itch, like feel. It is feel, not felt, sorry. Sorry, let me just... Okay. Okay, so... So... Uh, feel, itch, etc. The second type of verbs are activity verbs. These verbs that denote activities like asking, like eating, like helping, like learning, like saying, like throwing, like writing. These are called dynamic verbs. They are not stated. So we can add ing or you can use ing to these verbs. Transition event verbs. These verbs that they talk about transition. For example, arrive, land, leave, lose, die, etc. So these verbs, we can add ing to these verbs. Why? Because they are talking about transition from one state to another. I arrive in London. So I arrived there. I arrived there. So there is a transition from one place to another. I left the company. It means there was a transition before, before leaving the company and after leaving the company. The, uh, there are some other verbs that they, they, they are known as momentary verbs, in which these verbs, they talk about moments, in which some moments are, uh, they talk about only one moment verb. So these are called momentary verbs. So they are not extending for a long time. For example, hitting. You cannot hit all the time continuously. So we can add ing to these momentary verbs as well. Jumping. Kicking, knocking, nodding, tapping, etc. There are some other verbs in which they are called process verbs. There is a process involved in these verbs. So, which means they are there is there are some states that these change will process. They are called changing verbs. They are words like change, verbs like change, deteriorate, grow, mature slow down and so on and so forth so these are called verbs uh, dynamic verbs that they take ing so the last classification of verbs is what the verbs are classified into structures in terms of structure there are one word verbs and multi-word verbs before talking about one word verbs and multi-word verbs we have to know that we have to distinguish between finite verbs and non-finite Finite verbs, we know the tense of these verbs. Non-finite verbs, we do not know the tense of these verbs. Non-finite verb like infinitives, to plus verb, for example, to go, to study, to do, we do not know the tense of these verbs because they are called tenseless. They are called non-finite. Non-finite means tenseless. ING participle, studying English is good, studying English was good, studying English will be good. So it can be used in present, past, and future. So that's why these, this is ing participle verb is a non-finite verb. It's sometimes called tenseless verb. We have also another type of non-finite uh, verb, which is called ed participle verbs. For example, lost in the city. So here, this verb is neither present nor past. Why? Because it's a non-finite. So coming back to the structure, verbs are classified in terms of structure. So 
So we have one word verbs and multi word verbs. One word verbs, it means they do not need anything else to complete its meaning. And they are they only consist of one word. Changing, change, kiss, make, love, uh, do, study. These are called one word verbs. But there are some other verbs that are multi word verbs. It means they ref they consist of more than one verb more than one element for example we have phrasal verbs we have prepositional verbs we have uh, phrasal prepositional verbs phrasal verbs like what usually a verb with a particle it's called particle out out is a preposition but here it's called particle so make out call up put on, take off, give up. So the way, why they are called phrasal verbs? Because the meaning of give and the meaning of give up is completely different. So the meaning of give means give something to somebody. But here, give up means resign. So in this, in this sense, these uh, phrasal verbs uh, are completely different from the original meaning of the original verbs. The second verbs are called prepositional verbs. The verb look and look up refer to the same thing. Clear and clear up refer to the same thing. Get and get out refer to the same thing. These up, these prepositions up at, uh, up at, on, in, these do not change the meaning of the verb. So get at and get having the same meaning. That's why they are called prepositional verbs. And these particles are prepositions, not particles. We have phrasal prepositional verbs. What do you mean by phrasal preposition? Phrasal verb, for example, come up. Come up means conclude with something. So come up is a phrasal verb, but we use a preposition with this phrasal verb, which is with. So we say come up with, make up. Make up. The word make and make up are completely different in meaning. That's why make up is a phrasal verb. So we use a preposition with this phrasal verb, say make up for. Stand. The meaning of stand and stand in are completely different. That's why stand in is a phrasal verb. But we use a preposition with it, stand in for. Put. The word put and put up are completely different. That's why put up is a phrasal verb. So put up word is a phrasal prepositional so all in all we have classified verbs in terms of uh, complementation in terms of function in terms of progressive aspect in terms of structure so this slide tells you about everything that are related to the grammatical properties of a verb Every verb in English must have a tense. So the tenses are present and past. You know, future is not tense, it's time. Every verb in English should have an aspect. Progressive aspect, perfective aspect, simple aspect, perfective progressive aspect. So every verb should, should be either simple, continuous, or perfect. Mood. So verbs are having mood we have indicative mood we have imperative mood and we have subjunctive mood in the coming lectures we will be talking about these moods and then voice every verb should have a voice whether active or passive so that's all for today i don't want to uh, lengthen the lecture so that's all for today. I hope you will stay safe. Thank you so much for joining.